Sword Art Online is a guilty pleasure of mine, but I won't deny that it is a very flawed franchise, though that's not exactly a controversial opinion, is it? This isn't a video ragging into SAO, because I'm sure the return of the Alexation arc is going to cause a surge of those in the near future. But through the series' highs and lows, a constant through line has always been its virtual worlds. The idea of VR MMOs isn't entirely original, and some of the in-universe game design is questionable, but there's no denying that the worlds of Eincrad, Alfheim, and Gungale are expansive and have the potential to be the backdrops of interesting stories. And if anime isn't the place for that to happen, then why not video games? I mean, Sword Art Online is literally about video games, so it makes sense to take advantage of that medium to tell new stories that can't be told elsewhere. I was reminded of this when I got an email a few days ago from Bandai Namco, telling me that the latest game based on SAO, Alexation Lycrosis, was releasing. Is this what I'm talking about today? No. Not because I think it's bad, I actually think it looks like a pretty solid anime game, but I have no attachment to the world of Alakazation, and I haven't watched the anime yet, and I'm not confident enough to throw down $60 on a Sword Art Online game right now, especially not with Bamco's crazy sales. But it did get me thinking about other Sword Art Online games that I do own in thanks to those crazy sales, but it only reminded me that I haven't done much with them. I tried a bit of Hollow Fragment and dropped it pretty quick, and it didn't leave me too eager to try Lost Song and Hollow Realization. But there was one more SAO game, and I remember being excited when it was announced. You see, my favorite in-universe game in SAO is Gungale Online, for a number of reasons. Phantom Bullet, though still very flawed, is still a personal favorite arc of mine for reasons better suited for when I eventually become an anti-tuber. The world itself is incredibly refreshing to see after two fantasy MMOs back-to-back, -back, and I don't think that it's much of a stretch to say that SAO Alternative Gun Gale Online is probably one of, if not the best things the franchise has put out, period. So yeah, I kinda like Gun Gale, so it shouldn't be terribly surprising that the only SAO game that I was actively excited for, and have already played to completion, is the game based on it, Fatal Bullet. But that's a lot of words that I just said to introduce the game. As SAO continues to leave guns in the dust, is Fatal Bullet worth your attention today? Starting with the story, and I'm about to talk about an SAO story, so sorry in advance for when I go off the rails, a new update has hit Gungale Online known as Gold Rush. Among the many changes this update brings is the appearance of a mysterious spaceship, requiring the use of new Arpha Sys support AIs to clear. You play as an original character, which can be customized to your liking with a large variety of options, who very quickly manages to find one of these AIs. Thus, the race begins to raise your levels, regain your Arpha's lost functions, and eventually tackle the spaceship, all while mysterious and dangerous happenings are occurring in the game, such as players dying in real life after being killed in-game, and if you're familiar with Gun Gale, you can probably already see where I'm going with this. The story of Fatal Bullet is passable, it checks a box off the list. It has its moments of funny dialogue, but it's very by the numbers on the whole. Some of the drama later on is incredibly forced, and really the whole story kind of loses steam by the end once the ship is cleared and the mystery becomes the focus. Schroinger's death trap in particular really grinds my gears. The game introduces a number of new characters, and while I like their designs, they aren't exactly well developed. Kiriha's motivations are made clear, but the conflict with her is brought up almost immediately and is incredibly sudden. And Itsuki gets something, but the rest don't really get much of anything and I think one of the main culprits for this is Kirito. Now, I'm not trying to say that Sword Art Online is at its best when Kirito isn't the focus. Okay, maybe I am, but it's not just Kirito that's the problem here. Both he and Asuna show up in the story within the first 20 minutes or so, and shortly after, you're introduced to all their friends, including the ones from other SAO games, because this does take place in an alternate continuity. Seeing all of them in GGO is nice fan service, yes, but all this really serves to do is bloat the cast. Time spent dunking on Klein or having any one of these characters question what's going to happen next is time that could have been spent developing the original characters of this story. Everyone gets a say on whatever's going on, but nobody says anything of any real significance, and it gives the impression that Kirito and the gang were forced into this plot simply because they needed to be. I'm not inherently against the idea of Kirito and his friends being here, so long as they're a part of an interesting story, but that's simply not the case. And nowhere is that more apparent than Kirito mode, 
and the entire Death Gun subplot. Fatal Bullet adapts the Phantom Bullet arc, but it doesn't do it particularly well. It's almost entirely confined to an unlockable Kirito mode, where you can play as the Black Swordsman, but this mode is really undercooked. It's exactly four battles and a bunch of cutscenes, and you'll burn through it in less than an hour. You might remember me saying that I like Phantom Bullet, but a lot of what I like about that arc, primarily its attempts to address the lasting trauma Kirito has of SAO and using it to link him to Sinon, is here yes, but it is undermined by how short the mode is. But don't worry, the fan service and the worst scene from that arc managed to make the cut. So that's nice. Kirito's entire presence in the main game is meant to build up to this mode, but it's a very hollow adaptation, and it's required to get the true ending, so you can't just ignore it either, unless you want a choice of which terribly unsatisfying ending to get. It makes me wonder why we had to adapt Phantom Bullet at all, because both modes suffer from having to piggyback off of each other. Here's an idea, and maybe it would have been too ambitious for a game like this, but why not have two campaigns? Have the main story focus on your original character and the Gold Rush update, and have Kirito mode focus on Death Gun and all that other stuff. That gives room for the respective characters from both sides to have more screen time, and actually gives them a chance to engage in the plots. It doesn't even have to be entirely segregated. Have Kirito and his gang hang around the base, keep them recruitable for missions if you so desire. You know, like what the SAO alternative characters do. Heck, you can even have the plots converge for the true ending if you want. Just give these characters some room to breathe. Whew, kinda went off there. Can't say I didn't warn you. As it is, Fatal Bullet's story is just kinda meh. I'm only getting so into it because I can see potential here, which is pretty on brand for Sword Art Online as a whole, I suppose. There's a story here that, if fleshed out, could appeal to people who aren't fans of SAO, and there's a way to incorporate fan service to SAO fans without making it feel like it was forced in. With how it's done right now, I think both sides lose. Non-SAO fans have to engage with an undercooked story in the name of fan service, and SAO fans have to deal with a hollow adaptation of something they've already seen. And for a game that touts having an original story, that's a big disappointment. Luckily, this is a video game, so the actual gameplay manages to bring it up a bit. Due to the setting of Gun Gale Online, Fatal Bullet is a third-person shooter where you'll run around and fight enemies in spectacular gunfights in pursuit of earning materials, gaining levels, and clearing dungeons. As far as the shooting goes, it's pretty standard stuff. Left trigger aims down the sights, right trigger fires, though you can also shoot without a scope if your aim is good. Speaking of aim, the bullet circle from GGO is here as a game mechanic, acting as a sort of assist mode. By tapping up on the D-pad, a large bullet circle will automatically lock onto enemies, meaning all you really need to do is face the general direction and start blasting. It's not terribly good for aiming at weak points, but it's good for crowd control, and it's perfect for when you just want to focus on moving your character. In regards to equipment, very early on you receive a UFG, which is essentially a grappling hook. By holding the left bumper, you begin aiming, and once you let go, it'll launch in that direction. If it hits a wall, you'll shoot up, allowing you to scale large obstacles very quickly. It can also be used for hitting certain switches and for stealing items from enemies. It does have a deceptively short range though, and busting it out kind of breaks a flow in the middle of combat, but it still has its utility if you're good. You also have gadgets and skills. By pushing down on the D-pad, you can switch which pallet is active, and by pressing the right bumper and the respective face buttons, you can use one of the four that you have equipped. Gadgets can range from anything like grenades and throwing knives to things like first aid kits. And skills are incredibly useful and have a large variety to choose from, assuming you're using the weapon that supports it. That leads nicely into the next point, being Fatal Bullet's vast array of weapons. Guns are literally the name of the game, so you have your choices of pistols, shotguns, SMGs, sniper rifles, assault rifles, gatling guns, etc, etc. If explosions are your thing, there are RPGs and grenade launchers, and if you're a square, you can always use a sword, though I find the melee combat to be a bit stiff. Each gun uses either optical or live ammunition, some guns from within the same class have different ammo types, each gun has a unique way of firing, there are varying clip sizes and rates of fire, there's a lot to consider even within the same type of gun. Later on in the game, you can unlock the sword and gun combo, which is for all intents and purposes the only way you should play the sword, and you can even unlock dual wielding for most weapons, which eats up your ammo twice as fast, but means you're dishing out twice as much damage. With so many options, it's easy to find something that'll appeal to your playstyle. 
and you can also equip two guns that can be swapped on the fly. I'm not that great at precision aiming, and I prefer a high rate of fire, so I tend to gravitate to dual wielding SMGs and assault rifles, while having my teammates cover my weak points. You can choose up to three other party members to join you, and while you can only customize the equipment of your ARFA, everyone else has designated roles that will determine how they behave, meaning party composition is a factor to consider. To equip certain guns and gadgets, you'll need high enough stats. Every time you level up, you're given CP, which can be spent on raising one of six stats, which dictate what you can equip and how you behave on the field. True to its source material, once you confirm your level up, there's no way to take it back, but you are given a number of slots to designate other character builds, meaning you can mess around with what stats you want where. Would have solved a lot of problems if this was in canon, but I digress. Once again, your playstyle will probably dictate what stats you want to build up. Slater here needs guns to carry these guns, so strength is a must, but speed is also an important factor to how I play, so agility is also something I've built up. And if it sounds like I just made Len but taller, I made Flader before I watched Alternative, so it wasn't on purpose. Oh crap, she dual wields SMGs too. With all these options, Fatal Bullet wastes little time throwing you into some crazy gunfights, and this is my favorite part of the game. It's incredibly satisfying tossing a grenade into a group of enemies, sliding in, and then unloading into any survivors. It also does the thing where it makes it that every trip has a payoff. Even if you don't engage in any of the side quests while in the field, there are still tangible results every time you fight. In addition to experience, enemies also drop items, which can range from materials to unappraised weapons or accessories. Agile can appraise these weapons for a price, making this the ideal way to increase your loadout, and Lisbeth can use materials to either upgrade weapons to boost their stats, or combine weapons to make a new one with augments of your choosing. You'll want to keep your gear up to snuff, as the late game of Fatal Bullet can be pretty brutal. Even on New Game Plus, this thing really gave me some trouble. Should you find things too hard or too easy, you can change the difficulty at any time, with easy halving the enemy stats and extreme cursing you for your hubris by doubling the stats and levels in exchange for rare drops and more XP. Regarding the presentation, it's kind of a mixed bag. I like the 3D models, but the lack of animations and cutscenes is pretty noticeable. The environments too can be pretty barren. I can't say it's not on brand for Gun Gale Online, but it doesn't exactly make for a visually engaging game, though some areas are better than others. I also can't say much for the music. It's serviceable, and I like the way that the field track becomes more intense once you enter a battle, but that's about all I can say. The game does manage to stay at a pretty consistent 30 frames a second, with drops only occurring briefly when things get really busy. For the record, I'm playing on the PlayStation 4, but I also have the game on the Switch, and it runs fine enough there too. In handheld mode, some of the models can be a bit blurry, and things start to get choppy the farther away they get from the camera, but the gameplay itself is fine enough, so it's a serviceable port if you want to play this game on the go. I wish I could say anything about the multiplayer, but the online community for this game is pretty dead, but it's not like there's that much here to do anyways. You can run some of the dungeons and bosses with friends, and you can do PvP battles, and that's about it. There's no way to play the campaign with friends, which seems like a real missed opportunity. That means if you get this game, you should go in it with the intent of single player only, but there's plenty of content here. The main campaign runs about 15 hours, I'd say, and New Game Plus is an option for replaying with all your current equipment. In addition, you can access a number of additional stories, including a full expansion from the main menu, giving you more to do after the main game is over. You'll need to level up your gear a lot if you want to take this on, but it's great for those who enjoy the game and want more. If you buy the base game, all of this is DLC, but if you buy the complete edition, all of it is included from the get-go, though you do need to play it through most of the main story before it becomes available. I know I spent a lot of time complaining, mostly about the story, but I want to stress that I really like Fatal Bullet. It's a pretty standard third-person shooter, yes, but it embraces its animated roots enough that the action is exciting and fun to engage with, and it gives you plenty of options to accommodate for various ways of playing. If you've never engaged with Sword Art Online or actively don't like it, well, I hope you like skipping cutscenes, but as far as action third-person shooters go, this is pretty good, and I think non-SAO fans can get enjoyment purely on a gameplay front. I wouldn't say for $60 though, partly because of how often Bamco puts stuff on sale, but it is again pretty standard, so I think full price is a bit of a hard sell for most people. 
with Alakazation just getting a game and Unital Ring doing whatever it's doing, I'm not sure what the future looks like for SAO games, but I'd love it if they came back and gave Fatal Bullet another spin, because with some fine tuning and, let's face it, a script overhaul, there's a fantastic game over here. But that's all I really got for now, I gotta bunker down and get ready to binge Alexation once all that's over. So until next time, see ya!